for um, networks. Now, just an FYI before I go ahead, I did record a video doing Dijkstra's for you. So we didn't explicitly learn it in class, but, uh, and the reason why is because it does get a little bit complicated just in the way that you're supposed to think of how to find um, the shortest path from one vertex to another. Uh, but if you want to watch it, it is on YouTube. So I'm happy for you to watch it. I have put the link here as well. Okay, so go ahead and watch it if you have time. Uh, but I think most of the ideas that you need or the concepts you need for finding the shortest path is probably easier just to do using um, trial and error. Okay, but be mindful that if you do trial and error, do it a few times. Don't do it just once because there might be more than one shortest path. And some of the, yeah, there could be like two shortest paths with the same values. Or uh, so if you do it more than once, that's great. Uh, but also you might not have gotten the shortest path after the first go. So you might have to do it a few times just to make sure you find the absolute shortest path. Like what we did here. Okay, we tried this and we found out that there was a shorter one. So do it more than once when you do your shortest path for um, these sort of questions. And then Dijkstra's, um, I haven't really seen it on the SAC in terms of it doesn't ask you to oh, find the shortest path using Dijkstra's method. But it's there if you want to watch the video for it, okay? All right, let's go on to 9J. So this is the final chapter with content that you have to learn. There is still one more chapter, 9K, but that's all just putting everything together that you've learned and then answering questions, okay? So for this chapter in 9J, what we're looking at is what you call a minimum spanning tree. Okay, minimum spanning tree. The keyword there is the minute word minimum. Okay, because what you're trying to do is basically connect every single vertex in a graph using the smallest number of edges. Okay, so when we when we think about we we look at a tree uh, or how a tree is constructed, you know that you've got like you know a trunk and then a bunch of branches. Okay, most of your graphs for this part of networks will kind of look like a tree in some sense, in that there's a few rules that you got to adhere to when you make a minimum spanning tree. But, but the idea is trying to connect every single vertex on a graph using the smallest number of edges. Okay, and there's also a couple of rules that you need to adhere to when you do this. Okay, so you got to make sure that it's minimally connected. Like I said, smallest number of edges possible. Okay, without, again, and you've got to connect every single vertex so it cannot be disconnected, okay? Okay, so you cannot have a disconnected graph. It has to be connected, everything, okay? Another thing as well is it has to have no cycles or no loops. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, well, basically what it's saying is if you have a graph that looks like this, okay, you've got your vertices, Okay, when it says no cycles, you can't have this. Okay, because what this gives you is it's a cycle that goes through every single vertex. So for this to be minimally connected or a minimum spanning tree, you've got to remove one edge. Remember, you just, you just got to make sure everything's connected um, and with the smallest number of edges. Okay, and for each pair of vertices, there's exactly one path between them. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention no loops, so you can't have that. Okay because it's an unnecessary edge, okay? You don't need it. And the last one is uh, exactly one path between them. So what that's saying is you can't have, zoom in, you can't have a vertex with two edges running through them like that, okay? It's only exactly one, okay? So that's not minimally connected because, or that's not a minimum spanning tree because you can still technically get rid of an edge. It's the smallest number of edges. That's what you're aiming for. All right, here are some examples, okay, of minimum spanning trees. Okay, here's an example here. You can see every single vertex is connected, and uh, so it's not disconnected, and it's all with the minimum number of edges. Okay, so there's no unnecessary loops like this or cycles like that. There's no random loops like that. And, and yeah, that's basically it. Or there's no multiple edges connecting a vertex. Okay, none of that. So that's an example of it. The, these are not examples of a minimum spanning tree. This one here is disconnected, okay? There's obviously, you can say there's two graphs, or there's one graph there, but these vertices, K 
cannot be, uh, they can't go to each other by, via one way or another. Okay, so that's a disconnected graph. Over here is also not an example because I can see a cycle happening here. Okay, so for this to be a graph, you got to make sure you get rid of, oh, sorry, a minimum spanning tree, get rid of one more edge. Okay, a couple more things. Okay, a tree, so any tree, okay, you can tell how many edges it's going to have if you have n, where n is the number of vertices minus 1. So if I told you I've got a tree with 10 vertices, how many edges will it have? Just take away 1. So it's going to have 9 edges. Okay, or if I have, for example, 12 vertices. Okay, how many edges? Okay, just minus 1. Okay, for a minimum spanning tree. Um, and a connected graph with n vertices and n minus 1 must be a tree. Okay, cool. So it's similar to that. All right, let's answer some of this. Now, draw all trees with four vertices. Okay, so you've got to have a, a graph, okay, where you've got four dots or four vertices and draw all the possible trees that you can have for them. Now, in terms of how many there are going to be, uh, you might have to do a bit of trial and error, but let's just try and see what we've got. So you've got one. Okay, that's one of them. Let's try another one. And I did try this. I feel like you could only really have two for this, but I could be wrong. That's the second one. And then, if I was to try and make another one, now this doesn't necessarily say non-isomorphic. Okay, what that means is not, not all the same, but... If you try drawing another one, I feel like it'll be a variation of either of these two. So if you went there, there, and then you tried going there, it's a variation of that. So that's not a different type of tree. If you went maybe there, and then there again, oh, sorry, yeah. So I think there's only two variations for this. Okay, so you can't really have more than two trees, or minimum spanning trees where there's four vertices. Yes. N, like this well it would technically be a variation of that yeah because it's all connected uh sort of in, in a line right so what tori is saying is or oh, all of that is ver a variation of basically this at the end of the day so that i think there's only two that you can have for this okay that's if they were non-isomorphic if they are isomorphic then sure you could have a bunch of different ones okay Question B, okay, how many vertices are there with a tree that has nine edges? So look at that example here, a tree that has a number of vertices, um, you can tell how many edges if you minus one. So if you work backwards, okay, if you've got nine edges, how many vertices should it have? You can have 10. Yeah, you can say that. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Brogdon. Could you have, is it quick, would this be a tree as well? Seven, eight, nine. Could that be considered a tree? If it had nine edges. But they're ending at 10 vertices. Yeah, so technically it wouldn't then, would it? It's not, it would be. It's oh, it would be. It's the same end. So you could say 10 or one for that one. But then, would, couldn't you say... Yeah, the, the edges need to end in, end in vertices. Oh, okay. Well, so then, then technically, this wouldn't be one then, would it? No, not until you drew the edges. Exactly. End okay, end. so you'd have to have, in, in by the definition of it being a tree, okay, it's going to have then 10 vertices. Okay, it has to have 10 vertices. Okay, so just adhere to this rule. Okay, when you're trying to figure out... Remember, if you've got 10 vertices, that means there's going to be 9 edges. If you have... For example, eight edges, then it has to be nine vertices. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. That's basically it for that. So just remember tree, couple of rules. I think the main thing to remember is this, these little rules. So no cycles, no loops. You can't have multiple edges connecting a two vertices together. Um, and it has to be minimally connected. Okay. You can't have any disconnected graphs. All right. Let's keep going. Okay, so let's look at this. So you've got this as a graph, okay? And they're going to come up, you need to come up with certain trees. For, or here are some examples of trees that represent it. 
So this graph here would be an example of it. I can see that it's got every single vertex in it and every single vertex is also connected minimally. Okay, there's between each vertex, there's only one edge. Okay, same with this one. Okay, you can see it's got all the vertices and everything's connected. No cycles, no loops, no multiple edges or anything like that. Okay, these ones are not examples. Okay, I can see that in this tree, or this supposed tree, there's a missing vertex. Where's vertex E? Okay, it's not there. Okay, you got to make sure you include every vertex there. So that's not a tree. And over this, over here, I can see that there is some sort of cycle happening around here. So if you wanted to make that a tree, you'd have to get rid of one of the edges at least. Okay, you wouldn't get rid of this one because that would still have a cycle and it would be disconnected. Okay, so just be mindful of the rules that we have for a minimum spanning tree there. Okay, I think that's it for that. All right, does that make sense? Any questions? Minimum spanning tree, pretty straightforward. Let's go through the last page, a couple of pages and then we're done. All right, so now with your minimum spanning tree, remember last lesson we learned about graphs that have weights on them. Okay, graphs that have values on the edges. Now they might remember represent different things. It could be the distance, could be the time it takes for you to get somewhere. Whatever the case might be, just remember that's what the numbers mean. Okay. Whenever you're working with graphs as well, there could be minimum uh, multiple spanning trees, even if they have weights. Okay. But when we're talking about minimum spanning tree with weights, okay, what do you guys think that might mean? So minimum spanning tree with regards to its weight. What do you guys think it means? Any idea? Yeah, yeah, let's say let's say you have this and I want the minimum weight but of it to be a, a spanning tree. What would what do you think that would mean? Well no. Too shy to answer. Okay, all good. So all you're doing is you're basically making a minimum spanning tree with the smallest value edges. Okay, so uh, there's a couple ways of doing it, but the idea is you're just making a spanning tree using the most minimum uh, weight of the edges. Okay, so Let's try and do this. So again, remember the rules. Uh, remember, you can't have a cycle, can't have loops or random loops. You can't have multiple edges, uh, 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 multiple edges between vertices. Okay. There's two ways you can do it. So the first one here is we call it Kreskov's algorithm. So basically, all you're doing is select a shortest edge. Okay, unless it forms a cycle. So pick an edge anywhere here as a starting point. Okay, unless, but don't, don't select one that makes a cycle and then just go from there, okay, and connect every single vertex. Let's do this. I don't know if there's a lot of space there for you guys, but just do it maybe over here, okay? What I like to do is I like to redraw the vertices first, okay? So start with that because, remember, you need to include every single vertex. On the sack, it might just ask you to color in the tree, but I'll do it this way so you guys can see what's happening. So draw your vertices and then put the labels on them. And then you, okay. All right, so according to this algorithm, all you're doing is start with a vertex that has the smallest, uh, sorry, start with an edge with the smallest value. Anyone tell me what's the edge with the smallest value between what two vertices are there? Anyone know? All right, I'm going to start calling out. Mia, which edge has the smallest degree, or uh, smallest value? R to S. Good. 18. Okay, so I want to include that because it's really small. And then from there, we just continue the same step until everything is connected. Remember, connected minimally though, yeah? So 18, put the value of 18 there so you know the weight. Okay, what else can we use? I've, I can use, let's go with Jordan. What's the next edge with the smallest weight there between what two vertices can you tell me say that again q to s q to s or q to t good yeah i would say q to t okay it's got a value of 20 so let's put that in oops okay 
Now, remember, we've got to try and connect all, everything minimally. So we still need to connect these vertices somehow and obviously both of these all together. So let's find some more. What's the next highest one? Oh, next smallest one. So Jordan's one was correct. I would probably include Q to S. Okay, because then that includes that. Okay, so next I've got to connect these two vertices together with the rest of the graph. P and U, can anyone tell me what could be the next one we could use? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Let's go with higher. Give me the smallest, next smallest value. You see in the graph? Good, T and U, yeah? That's only 28, so I like that. Let's include that. Okay, and there's one more. Okay, I have to connect P somewhere. So... Should I go with PQ or should I go with PU? Which one is better? Mm -hmm. PU, okay, easy. And there you go, there's your tree. And then normally you probably, you might be asked to add the total weight of it. So you could just say total weight. Actually, let's add it all up. So it's gonna be 34 plus 28 plus 20 plus 25 plus 18. Okay, put in your calculator. Also, you'll notice that we don't really use our CAS much for this topic um, as there's not a lot needed to do with our CAS. But if you have to, you can probably use your CAS for when you do like your Euler's, your Euler's formula. Okay, so what we've done here is we've only included the smallest values needed. So that, that one to make a minimum spanning tree. Okay, and that's that. Pretty straightforward. Okay, I want to pause here. There could be more than one. Okay, just speaking, but I think for this one, that would be it. All right, so that's one method of doing the minimum spanning trick, which we call Kruskal's algorithm. Now, the other one, so that one is all just about looking for the minimum one and then just connect, or looking for the smallest weight and connecting them. Now, this one here, Prim's algorithm, okay, you have to start at a certain vertex, okay? doesn't matter which one, but start with uh, any vertex here. So according to this uh, algorithm, start with this uh, for any vertex and then include the shortest edge that connects that vertex to another vertex, okay? But with the smallest weight, okay? So just make sure that you go with the smallest weight. I find sometimes this can be a bit finicky, but uh, a lot of the times you can, you can use either of this or this algorithm. Okay, but just be mindful, you need to know how to do this. So you need to keep repeating that, going with the smallest weight from one vertex to another until every single uh, vertex is connected. Okay, so for this one, let's try an example. So start off by doing your vertices. Always start with that. Although, like I said, in the sack, you might just have to color in the path, but it's all good. Okay, so let's do this one. So I might start with um, this vertex here. Okay, nice and easy. So that one is going to be connected to this vertex with a degree of 12. Oh, sorry, with a weight of 12. Now I'm at this vertex here. I need to connect it to another vertex. I kind of like 14. That's really, really low. So I'll go with that. Okay. Now I'm still here. Okay, 14. Okay, I've, I've got two, three options. I can go to this vertex with 11 or this vertex with 12. Now, if I look at it, 11 is a lot less. So again, we're going with the smallest one. Okay, but going back to it, this edge here or this vertex here is not connected and I have that opportunity. So I might connect that 12. Okay, what else? I've got two more vertices that need to be connected. I'm over here. Okay. I kind of like that. That's a very good one. Nine. And then I've got an option of either connecting from this, this vertex to there or there. And I think the 16 is better, okay, because it's less. So let's go with the 16. Okay, and there, there's your tree. Add all the weights up. So you've got 12 plus 14 plus 12 plus 16. 
plus 11 plus 9. Sixteen, eleven, nine. So the total weight should be seventy-four. And just to highlight, making sure we've got everything. So you've got twelve, got twelve and sixteen, got eleven, fourteen, and nine. So what you'll notice here is kind of similar to cross goals, where you kind of go from lowest to highest. But in this method, you're just starting at one vertex, picking the edge that has the smallest weight. Okay, so go ahead and try this one for me, and then we'll see if you can uh, go through the answers together shortly. At the end, you always add up the weight. Um, generally speaking, I think that's what's going to expect it of you anyway in the sack. So just add up everything. Make sure you put the right numbers in. This is probably the trickier part is making sure you put the right numbers in your calculator. 20 plus 15 plus 23 plus 21. 19. Yep. 201. 200. 200. Ooh, okay. Did you have a slightly different path, Hakten? Yeah. What, what did we have different? Um, <laughs> a lot. Okay, so maybe yours would have been better. Okay. But just double check, did you put in the right numbers for the edges? Because you may, may have gotten one off or something like that. It does happen. Well, I'll have to double check and see if that is the correct. I, I could be wrong, okay? So I, I might have to do it again and double check. Yeah? But I think generally speaking, there should be only one tree. But if there's multiple trees in there, as long as you get the minimum, you should be fine. Okay, it could be, you, I could have gotten 201 maybe via another connection, maybe, but sometimes it could happen. But I think 201 might be the smallest for this one. Okay. All right. That's basically it. Do you guys have any questions for this? Okay, so for cross goals method, it's all about just going with smallest edges. I kind of prefer cross goals more, but either one is fine. And then for prims, Start at one vertex and then just pick the smallest uh, uh, weight and go from there until everything is connected. Okay? That's it for this one.